Hello guys. Today we're going to do some uh, routine service on the uh, Eagle Craft scooter. I'm going to change the oil, adjust the valves. The valves probably need to be adjusted. I don't think they've ever been done and it's got 3,500 miles on it. It's getting a little cold blooded. It's not running all that smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the plastics off of this and uh, start getting down to business. Okay. All right. First thing I did was I removed the battery cover. It's just held in by two screws. Let me pull the screw out here so I don't lose it. it. Sits in there like that, and then it's got a screw there and a screw there, just Phillips. So I'll go ahead and take that off. I'm gonna have to take the battery out because I can't get this tray out without with the battery in it. So, that's going to be this, 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 and this, and then it should pull on out. Now I'm finding that I need to find a few miscellaneous nuts and bolts for it, uh, so I'll be doing that too. Um, I might have to replace some of the vacuum lines on it. Uh, I've never pulled this one apart to uh, service it, and I bought it used, so there's no telling what's been serviced and what hasn't. So, that's where we are with it. With these two nuts off, I can actually just lift the seat off, set it aside. So I'm going to do that. Off she comes. Now I've got to disconnect the battery. That's easy, it's just a Phillips. So what I like to do is I like to put this screw back in here so I don't lose that little lead nut. Alright, now that that's out, I've got two more bolts to pull off right there. Okay, those are out now. Now I can pull this cover off. Actually, the under seat compartment. I'm to feed the fuse holder through the side of it. There we go. And then we can set that aside. <clears throat> what we're after is that valve cover right there. And it's a real son of a gun to get at with uh, all these plastics in the way. So to remove the plastics I've got to take the rack off, and then I can pull the plastics off the back of the bike. <clears throat> Some parts that give common problems on these. Here's the auto enricher for the carburetor. Here's the starter solenoid. Here's the fuse holder. I don't know if this one's stock or not. Uh, this one actually carries an extra fuse, it looks like, inside. Um, fuel pump. These give problems. And then the vacuum lines. Vacuum lines are usually cheap Chinese vacuum lines and uh, they give problems. So, although these don't look so bad. They look like they're in pretty good shape. Another thing to inspect is your intake. This is a plastic part and they crack. And then you'll have a vacuum leak. Again, luckily I'm not tearing it down that far, but, uh, and mine looks like it's in pretty good shape. Okay, to remove the rack, you need to start here, and loosen these and take them out. 
and take these out. Loosen this screw here. Back down here, there's a series of bolts that go through here. And two here. And then two in here. Then we need to unplug the tail light and it should lift off. All right, to remove the rack, we need to first remove the hand holds. And then back here, there's another brace. Those need to be loosened, and then this should be able to lift off of the body. Once I get that done, then it's about loosening this bolt, loosening these two screws on the side, and then there's two under the bumper. And then the, the tail light, and then she should just come off. All right, I'm ready to uh, take the rack and trunk off. I've got all the bolts loose and out. Something I do to keep track of them is on these two brackets. There's a short one and a long one. So I just put them back in the bracket so I'll know which is which. All right. The bracket is, uh, or the rack is off of the scooter. Now I can remove this screw. The two screws up front, right here. And the three, or two, I think it's two, under the bumper, right here. Feels like one's missing. Time for a coffee break, though. Got my good old 7-Eleven copy. Mm. It's freaking cold. Oh well. All right. The next thing you got to do is you've got to work out, work all these places where the uh, body work snaps together. So you got to work those loose. I got one back there. I still need to work loose, and I should be good to go. This one here is already loose, so that's the last one. Next, this is the tail light connector. That one's back in there, so now we'll have to undo this one. Hmm. Alright. So just press down on the little deal right there, and it should come loose. Of course, trying to do this with one hand is next to impossible, but... Well, I got it. Oh, almost forgot. We've got the, the latch. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, because I can't get my hands down in here, my hands are just too big, is I'm going to take this guy off. To do that, I need to take this uh, trim plate off and then unbolt the uh, floorboard. And then I should be able to kind of jiggle it and work it back and forth and get it off of there. And remember, these things just snap together. But uh, you got to be real careful because you don't want to break any of the tabs. Okay, because of my big hands, I end up having to take the floorboard out as well. Not a real big deal. But this is the point where you lock the garage door so your wife doesn't come in and see your scooter all tore apart and uh, in bits and pieces. I got bits over there, bits over there, but, uh, bits right here. <laughs> but uh, now a lot of guys will say you don't have to tear them down this far to do a valve adjustment. Uh, one of the reasons I am tearing it down this far is because my hands are just too big to fit in there. Um, we did uh, my buddy's uh, Baron, which is almost the same scooter with a few differences. Uh, we were able to get through the fuel door on his uh, because basically his fuel tank is up there, not down there, and, but it still has a fuel door, so we were able to work the valve cover bolts through there. But it was still a pain in the butt. This is going to be a whole lot nicer for me to uh, work on, and it's going to save me a lot of time because I'm not working around things even though I had to tear the scooter down further. 
But again, this is the point where you lock the garage and you don't let your wife come in and see it because she'll see it and have a heart attack. Although my wife knows a little better because I've had trucks tore apart and everything else. So I'm not too worried about that. But uh, if you ever wanted to see what an Eagle Craft looks like, uh, well, half naked anyway, here's what, what they look like. Um, there are a couple extra harnesses in here you don't need to worry about. They use basically the same harness on all scooters. And uh, so you end up with little things like this just off to the side, not plugged in. One thing I did notice, and this is where it's um, a big advantage to have it tore apart like this. So I noticed this ground over here is loose. So I'll tighten that down while I'm in here. Uh, it really does give me a good chance to inspect everything. Fuel lines. Uh, I've got a few missing bolts here and there that I need to take care of. Uh, I, did, I can't believe how dirty it is. It's dusty more than anything. So um, it should probably be cleaned up a little bit. But uh, all in all, I'll get these valves adjusted and get it all. Looks like my sending unit's leaking just a little bit too over here. That's gasoline. Um, but uh, so I'll clean that up a little bit and. Uh, maybe change the gasket on the sending unit. But, uh, yeah, this took me about uh, 35 minutes to tear it down to this point. So it doesn't take long. You just got to take your time. Uh, you got to know how things kind of slide together and snap together. Like this, for instance. This has got these little snaps. They look broken, but they're not. That's just where they missed it with the paint. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming together. Also gives me a chance to get down and clean stuff like this. Uh, the previous owner had, I think, reflective tape all over it. All right, got the valve cover off. As you can see, just four eight millimeter bolts. The engine set at top dead center. You have a timing mark here, a timing mark here, and a timing mark here. This needs to be pointed up. These two need to be level with the uh, valve cover sealing surface. From there, we loosen these um, set nuts, lock nuts. It's a nine millimeter. And then we can back out the adjuster. And on this one, the exhaust valve is super tight. So that's what's causing the problem. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 0.04, I don't know if you can see that, 0 0.004, or 0 0.006 millimeter, with 0 0.004 inch, and that's what we're going to adjust our valves to. The first thing we're going to do is get it between the adjuster, and get that even, it's not level, but get it in there, between the adjuster, then we'll tighten the center screw down to where it just drags on it. And then we'll tighten the uh, set nut and then tighten it down. Okay, same procedure on the exhaust valve. The other thing is, is you're gonna want to make sure this puppy is tight. The one is tight, you check it again to make sure it's right.
Hmm. I've been using this gauge wrong. I was, I was. It's too tight. So, this is something you've got to make sure is right because if you get it wrong, it won't run or it'll burn a valve. It can, the piston can hit the top of the valve and ruin a piston, ruin a valve, bend the valve. And it'll just tear up stuff. So, you got to make sure this is right. Take your time with this, in other words. That's too loose. That feels about right, actually. All right, now we'll tighten her down. You wanna hold this guy right here, make sure it doesn't turn. And then he can get in here and just tighten her down. Yeah? What? Yeah? Is it raining? Now for the moment of truth. I've got the battery back in it. Now I am not putting the plastics on it quite yet because I want to make sure it's not tapping. I want to make sure it's running right. Um, so let's go ahead and fire it up. So I have the seat pan back in just so I can have the battery. Whoop. I clip the rear brake. Remember the bike's on its center stand. Much better. It's not tapping. Whoop. Speed's just a little high, maybe. I don't want to mess with it a whole lot because the wrench is probably on. But it is spinning the rear wheel just a little bit. There we go. And now it's going to spin the rear wheel. So we're about right on the idle. Sounds like it's running pretty good. All that's left now is for me to change the oil on it and start putting the plastics back on it. Okay, I've spent a little time cleaning it up. You know, a clean scooter's a happy scooter. Even though she's a Chinese scooter, still, if you take care of it, it'll take care of you. All right, the way you put the floorboard back in, it's kind of reverse of how you take it out. You want to get these clips, or these little snaps to line up. It'll go in. Do the same for the other side. Oop. Just like that. Then we'll put the two bottom pieces in. And then we'll start bolting and screwing it all back together. Oops, just knocked over my WD-40. Well, I've had it apart. I've also cleaned up a lot of pieces, like I'll clean 
all this up here before it goes back together so it'll look like that. And then uh, get this bolted on and then I put the two bottom lower parts on and then I can put the tail back on it. Now to finish bolting in the floorboard, use these funky looking bolts. They've got a little shoulder on them. Drop down in there. If you want them tight, you don't want them over tighten. Okay, the next part we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, bottom trim panel on. These little ears point forward and they fit into these little slots right there. And then this part here will lock together when you push it together. And just like that. Now it's ready for that screw. Then I'm going to screw back here. Foot pegs just slide on to this little pin. And then until that hole there, right there, lines up. Then you put the bolt in with your 10 millimeter ratchet. And again, I'm going to have to put this down because I need both hands. It was the same for this side. It's a little harder to get at. It's right down in there. Now, one word of warning while you're putting those screws in. You don't want to use a... Makita or a, a DeWalt or a, a power drill or a power screwdriver of any kind. You want to do it by hand. And the reason why is it's just the plastic here that holds them. The screw is a self tapping screw. So when they put it on, that didn't have any holes in it. And they just zip, 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 zip. And the problem is, is it makes it real weak as far as the threads go. So you want to be very gentle when you're putting these little plates back on. Alright, it's time to start putting on the rear shell. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this little cable, some keeper right here. I'll lift it up a little bit. Set it kind of on top like this so I can plug in the tail light assembly. Whoop. And then I'll slide it back and then forward. We're going to want those little ears, these little ears like right here, to go into these holes. And we're going to want this clip to line up with this here so we can put the screw in. Then, of course, it needs to be wiped down and cleaned up. And then we also need to hook up the trunk or the uh, latch for the seat. Yeah, that cable end needs to go right into this little ear. It has a little hole in it right there. And then, of course, we have the bracket for the rest of the the uh, uh, cable for the cable end here, or housing end. I'm going to straighten it out real quick with my pliers. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, got everything snapped back in. Got these screws in here and here, and the one back over there. Haven't done underneath the bumper yet. Kind of working my way from this end of the scooter back towards this end. Next thing I gotta do is uh, put the rack back on. I started by putting the inside bolt for the uh, grab handles first and then I'll line everything else up back here and put the long bolts in for the rack. And Then I've got the two down there so I'm just kind of working my way back. I can also put uh, once this rack's tightened, then I can put the seat pan back in. I could probably put the seat pan back in right now, but I still need to tighten these once it's um, once the rack's on. So. Getting it. 
little at a time on each side. That's pretty tight. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I got those two back ones. I think I'll put the seat pan in next and the battery and go ahead and test it. Okay, just doing a final test before I completely button everything down. All I got really left is the battery cover and the uh, seat. Checking for rattles. Sounds good. All the lights work, turn signals, hold on. Kill switch, and yes, it's working as well. So, so far, pretty good. Okay, there it is, it's all done. Eh, it took me about four hours, but some will say I'm slow, but I also did a lot of other things. I did a lot of cleanup. Um, I checked vacuum lines, pull, I pulled the plug, took a look at it, um, I got a bunch of tape residue off the body, um, I just basically went through it one end to the other, um, had to move some uh, clamps, they're little spring clamps, they suck, I'm probably going to end up replacing them with real hose clamps eventually. Um, but uh, they were, they'd slid off or somebody didn't put them back on, so did a lot of that. Uh, tightened the ground wire on it. Uh, just really gave it a real thorough going over. Um, so like I said, about four hours. And uh, I actually started on it way back, like at uh, three o'clock and it's like nine now, but I spent about two and a half hours doing some other things around the house and talking on the phone while I was working on it a few other things uh, like I said it's all back together it's running great uh, last thing I need to do is I still do need to change the oil I'm gonna do that tomorrow uh, we're still gonna have ugly ugly weather but uh, yeah sweet <laughs>